Hey folks, I'm Troy and you're watching TroyTube. In this video, we are going to design a cookie cutter in Inkscape and carry that all the way through the design process and create it and print it on a 3D printer. Now, as I've mentioned before, about a year ago, Tammy started a cookie business, a cottage cookie business. She runs here at the house and decorates these amazing sugar cookies, Frosted Love Cookies on Facebook, if you wanna take a look at what she does. And uh, I, right about the same time, I bought a 3D printer, started toying around with it, started printing some miniatures and some functional things that I use around the house. I mean, why buy a $4 hook when I can spend like $400 on a machine and supplies and make it myself, right? Uh, just to Typical crafter fashion. So uh, while I was doing that, she started needing some custom cookie cutters and she was buying some that were 3D printed. So I said, well, let's figure out how to do this. And uh, so I figured out how to do this with Inkscape and Tinkercad and uh, it's all free software. And um, uh, so I'm gonna switch over to the computer. I'm gonna show you how to do the design. There is a, you're gonna wanna pay very close attention to this because there's some specific things you're gonna wanna do with it. But um, we'll switch over to the computer. We'll get the design built and then I'll show you how to actually um, move that into Tinkercad, how to make all the adjustments and everything and get it to a functional 3D design that can then be printed and we'll print it on the printer. Now, I know a lot of you are gonna ask me which 3D printer I have. I have a Creality 3 Ender 3 Pro printer. Um, I'll do another video uh, soon on the uh, Creality printer and people are going to start asking me for recommendations things like that. I liked the experience with the Creality printer. It really comes I guess compared to some as a bare bones it requires a lot of assembly uh, but you learn a lot by doing that too. So if you're stubborn and you want to trudge through all the problems and things like that and really learn and figure it out uh, then it, it's probably a good unit for you. And, but I'll do another video on that and show you some of the things I did and some of the modifications I made to it to make things a little bit easier and the things that I learned along the way as part of the process. So I'll switch over the computer, we'll get this design built and we'll uh, show you how to do all this and print it on the Creality printer. We're gonna get started with Inkscape and I'm using version 1.1.1, the current version as of January 2022. And we're in the default canvas and the first thing we're gonna do is make some adjustments to our canvas. So we're gonna to go to File, Document Properties. And over here on the right side, we're going to change this and make sure it's set to pixels. And we're gonna set this to 500 by 500. And we're going to set our display units to pixels as well and then we can close that box now for the purposes of this video we're going to just use a built-in shape and choose the star tool and up here choose the five-pointed star and just draw it on the screen and we want our shape to be uh, mostly the size of our uh, box here and um, we're going to hold down control and shift while we adjust the size so that it adjusts proportionally and now with our object selected we are going to go to path object to path everything needs to be a path from here on out uh, that we're working with and we're going to hit control shift f as in frank and this brings up the fill and stroke panel. So with our object selected, we're going to turn off fill. We're going to turn on stroke by clicking the first little box. And then on the stroke style, we're going to change this setting to millimeters. And we're going to set the width to 0.8 millimeters. Now at this point, we're going to hit uh, we, we, you notice we still have our object selected. We're going to hit Control D as in duplicate, and then we're going to drag off the top one, and we're going to hit Control D and duplicate it again, and drag that one off. So we have three that we're working with. So again, the first one we were set to 0.8 millimeters. The next one we're going to click on it and set it to two millimeters. And then the last one we're going to set to six millimeters. And we can close the fill and stroke panel after that. And we're going to draw a box around all three of our objects, or you can hit control A for all and select all three of your objects. And we need to go to path, stroke to path. 
So now we have three objects, all different widths, that are all paths. And by that, I mean when I click on the node editor, you'll see when I click on it, there's an inside and an outside dimension to it. Now what I'm going to do is highlight these two and I'm going to hit control X and cut or I can delete them because we're just going to undo and put them back again here in a moment as you'll see. So the, our first one is here in the um, uh, inside the box. It's very important that it stays inside this box. And I'm going to call this one star one. I usually name the files one, two, and three. Uh, it can be saved as an Inkscape SVG for the purposes of this. It doesn't really matter much. And then I can hit uh, paste or undo and get our others back. Uh, again, we want to get the second one, the second widest. We'll do the same thing, only we'll name it star two. and then we want to save the widest one as star 3. So now I have a folder uh, that I've created on my des desktop that has all three SVG files. Uh, each one has the three uh, the different widths of the SVGs stored in them. And next you're going to, going to want to go to tinkercad.com and create a new design. You'll want to create an account so that you can save your designs. It is free to create an account on Tinkercad. It is a little tricky to work with sometimes if you're used to not used to working with 3D software. So one of the tricks is your scroll wheel will zoom in and out. And if you want to rotate your design plane around, if you right click on your mouse and drag it around, you can change your view perspective. Okay, so that's one important thing to remember here. Now up here we can click and rename our file. Then over here on the right, we're going, we are going to import each of those SVG files. So we'll import star one. Now one thing uh, that's important to specify here is the scale, uh, which will adjust the size of the SVG file for our design plane in Tinkercad. There are probably some things I could do to set the size in Inkscape so that it imports directly into Tinkercad without having to adjust this, but for the two seconds it takes to do this. I found the sizes that just seem to work well and I've stuck with them and I do this. So I set the scale at 40 percent. Now if you're using an older version of Inkscape sometimes uh, if you set that uh, uh, document property to 500 by 500 pixels it will actually import to Tinkercad and show you the pixels at the bottom at 500 by 500 and you can simply change it there to 200 by 200 uh, on import here, uh, which is the same as specifying 40% uh, here at the top part. And next we'll go to import and we'll do each of our SVG files and do the exact same things. And you can move right along, it imports in the background while you're working here. And you'll see that it will import all three objects for me. And on the screen I can separate them. Now you're going to want to do a couple things here while you have them separated. One, uh, when you click on an object you want to adjust the height of it. And you want these to be slightly different heights so that you can work with them. So the thinnest one will be the tallest, the uh, middle one will be the second, and then the thicker one will be the more shallow. And then we'll select all three and then up here at the top right we'll use the alignment tool and we'll click here and here to align them directly over top of each other. So if I move my canvas around you'll see that they're perfectly centered one over top of the other. And now the next thing I want to do uh, before I join these objects together is to select them all and then I'm going to adjust the size of them. And if I hold shift it will adjust them symmetrically. So um, one of the things I want to do down here is to uh, edit my grid. I'm going to change my units to inches and then I'm going to change my snap to 1 16th of an inch. So now for a cookie cutter, most cookies uh, that Tammy makes are usually 3 to 4 inches in size, so I'm going to make this one about 3 and a half inches. And now it's time to adjust the height. So the way I set these up is to adjust the height down to 
0.63, so 1 16th of an inch. So if I go to 1 8th and then go down one notch, that puts me at 1 16th. The middle uh, height I set to 1 half inch. And then the thinnest one I set to 5 8 And then I select all the objects and click on the group which is kind of like a join or a weld, uh, so it makes it all one object. And in this case, this is a symmetrical object, so I'm not going to have to flip it around or anything like that. If it is not a symmetrical object, you'll want to uh, use the mirror tool to flip it around and uh, mirror it and so that when the cookie cutter actually produces the cut, that it is mirrored and uh, positioned in the correct way. I might do that in a later video, show you a non-symmetrical object creation, but uh, that's all we need to do here. And so now we're going to export this and we're going to choose an STL file and that will download the file. Now I'll go ahead and drag that into my folder with my SVG files just so I'll have them all in one place. So now we'll switch over to the Ultimaker Cura software and we'll open the uh, STL file. And like Tinkercad I can right click and rotate the uh, design plane around and take a look at it and I'm going to slice it and if you're not familiar with 3D printing slicing basically takes the object and divides it up into a bunch of little tiny slices so that it can stack them up and build the model uh, using the filament and it says it's going to take an hour and 35 minutes to print this now I am using Octoprint so I don't have to save this to an SD card or anything I can print it directly from here and now we have to wait about an hour and a half for it to produce the unit and then we'll be all finished. All right, so now we have our 3D printed cookie cutter. I should have mentioned I printed this with PLA filament. So uh, I believe it's made out of partially out of cornstarch or something. So uh, pretty good uh, uh, starter filament, especially to work with. if You're just now getting into 3D printing. And I wanted to show you the finished product, talk about a couple things. The reason I used the three different sizes and widths and thicknesses, uh, one, the wider part goes, is on the back and it gives it some surface area. It gives it rigidity, uh, keeps it from flexing gives you some surface area to press down on and uh, that six millimeter wide piece uh, seems to serve um, and, and 1 16th inch thick seems to serve that well without overdoing it without making it too thick or too heavy the second part or the tall part here is the strength of the cutter for the depth and then if you look closely you'll see that there's a little tapered step down right at the edge and that gives it just a little bit of a, a thinner sharper edge to get your cut started so those are the three different pieces uh, in the SVG files that I created and printed so hopefully that's been useful to you um, you know I, I did this video assuming that you have some basic knowledge of 3d printing I might do some other videos to you know help you get started with 3d printing um, if some people were interested interested in that to share what I've learned and what I did to, to get things moving and be able to do it consistently uh, every time I print that things come out pretty good and don't have too many issues with that because like everything especially with crafting there's a big learning curve there's a lot of trial and error a lot of uh, techniques a lot of workarounds people will suggest that I don't recommend like using glue on your bed things like that that are just um, they're not needed in my opinion um, so uh, but hopefully that's been helpful to you and the design aspect and learning how to uh, use Inkscape and Tinker Tinkercad to produce a 3d cookie cutter so I'll leave you with a time-lapse video of the actual print if you have any questions or comments leave them down below the video